Welcome to the pre-application information session for the fiscal year 2021 Legal Assistance for Victims Grant Program, also referred to as the LAV program. The Office on Violence Against Women, also referred to as OVW, is convening this pre-application session to go over the FY 2021 solicitation for the LAV program. The purpose of this session is to provide information regarding the LAV solicitation. We will highlight a few key points in this solicitation. However, it is not the intent, nor is there sufficient time to go over every aspect of the solicitation. All applicants are responsible for reading the FY 2021 LAV solicitation and the OVW solicitation companion guide and ensuring that a complete application is submitted. LAV program staff cannot provide any feedback to applicants about the quality of an applicant's proposal or provide any information outside of what is presented in the solicitation. However, LAV program staff will be available throughout the period that the solicitation is open to respond to any questions about the application requirements. Please feel free to send questions about the LAV solicitation to the LAV program email mailbox at ovw.lav at usdoj.gov or call the main line at 202-307-6026. It will be helpful to have the LAV solicitation in front of you for a point of reference during this information session. On the cover of the solicitation, Please note that applications are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. Please refer to pages 30 through 31 of the solicitation for more information on submission and deadlines. Please note that OVW will not accept late applications, so applicants are strongly encouraged to begin submitting their applications 24 to 48 hours prior to the application deadline and carefully review the OVW policy on late submissions on pages 22 through 24 of the solicitation. OVW anticipates notifying all applicants of funding decisions by October 1st, 2021. Eligibility is mentioned on the cover of the solicitation as well as on page 11. Eligible applicants include private nonprofit entities, publicly funded organizations not acting in a governmental capacity, such as law schools, territorial organizations, Indian tribal governments, including Indian tribal consortia, and tribal organizations. Page five of the solicitation provides background on the history and goals for the LAV program. The LAV grant program is intended to increase the availability of civil and criminal legal assistance needed to effectively aid adult and youth ages 11 and older, victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking by providing funds for comprehensive direct legal services to victims in legal matters relating to or arising out of that abuse or violence. Comprehensive legal services should address the broad spectrum of legal issues that victims encounter and help promote economic independence for victims. In addition to representation in emergency and non-emergency protection order hearings, this includes representation in family matters, such as divorce, child custody, or child support, consumer or housing matters, and credit restoration. Any services unrelated to the provision of legal assistance or legal advocacy are unallowable under the grant program. Examples of activities beyond direct legal services that may be supported with LAV funds include advocacy, as long as the advocate is providing services related to the legal assistance, for example, safety planning, court accompaniment, and preparation of court for court appearances, translation services if related to the legal services, child care directly related to legal assistance, for example, child care to enable the victim to meet with his or her attorney or go to court, and transportation related to the legal assistance, for example, travel to meet with the attorney or to go to court. 
Please note that LAV program funds may not be used to provide criminal defense services. A few or a project partner provide services that are unrelated to legal services in connection with your project. You should make it clear in your proposal that LAV funds will only be used to support allowable activities. Funds under this program must be used for one or more of the statutory purpose areas listed on this slide. The FY 2021 LAV grant program has three purpose areas. You will find this information on page six of the solicitation. Please review the purpose areas carefully as project activities funded through the LAV grant program must fall under one or more of these purpose areas. You will note that Purpose Area 3 states not more than 3% of the funds awarded may be used for this purpose of pro bono legal assistance. This requirement applies to the entire amount of LAV funding appropriated for the year. This is something that OVW monitors internally. Applicants are not required to limit their proposals to 10% pro bono legal assistance. Information regarding the OVW priority area under the program can be found on page six of the solicitation. In FY 2021, OVW is interested in supporting the priority area identified on this slide. Applications proposing activities under this priority area will be given special consideration. OVW recognizes the need to place increased focus on sexual assault in order to address the lack of available direct legal services for survivors of sexual assault and the unique aspects of sexual assault trauma from which survivors must heal. Applicants proposing to focus 50% or more of their grant funded activities on intimate and non-intimate partner sexual assault legal services will be given special consideration. In addition, applicants that are, applications that are submitted by sexual assault victim service providers or sexual assault coalitions that propose to focus 80% or more of their grant funded activities on non-intimate partner sexual assault legal services can apply for larger awards and may be eligible for an additional 24 months of non-competitive funding. In order to be eligible to receive $800,000 to provide 80% or more of non-intimate partner sexual assault legal services, the lead applicant must be a sexual assault victim service provider or sexual assault coalition. The definition of a victim service provider can be found on page seven of the solicitation. Applicants proposing to focus 50% or more grant funded activities towards sexual assault will receive priority consideration. These applicants should articulate the specific legal needs of sexual assault survivors within their communities and how project activities would meet those needs. Applications should also reflect that applicants specialized training and experience in legal matters specific to sexual assault. Those applying to focus on sexual assault should demonstrate a commitment to addressing sexual assault and should clearly show that the applicant has the capacity to address the priority effectively. Applicants who state in the data requested with application section that they will address sexual assault but fail to include the requested information in the project narrative and MOU or MOE will not be considered as addressing the priority area. Pursuant to the LAV statute, not less than 3% of funds made available for the LAV program must be used for projects that assist adult and youth victims of domestic violence, dating violence, stalking, and sexual assault on lands within the jurisdiction of an Indian tribe. Applications proposing to assist such victims will receive special consideration in order to meet this requirement but they must include the percentage of proposed activities that will support services to victims on tribal lands.
OVW does not fund activities that jeopardize victim safety, deter or prevent physical or emotional healing for victims, or allow offenders to escape responsibility for their actions. Please refer to the OVW Solicitation Companion Guide for additional details. Please note, applications that propose any activities that compromise victim safety and recovery or undermine offender accountability may receive a deduction in points during the review process or may be eliminated from consideration entirely. The LAV program has specific out-of-scope activities that will not be supported by this program. We have highlighted highlighted a few of these activities on this slide, but a complete list of those activities can be found on pages seven and eight of the solicitation. It is important to review this list thoroughly as applications that propose activities deemed to be substantially out of scope may receive a deduction in points during the review process or may be eliminated from consideration. The solicitation provides details on the federal award information beginning on page nine. All awards are subject to the availability of appropriated funds and any modifications or additional requirements that may be imposed by law. There is no guarantee that funds will be available in the future. However, OVW may elect to make awards in a future fiscal year for applications submitted under this solicitation but not selected for FY 2021 funding, depending on the merits of the applications and the availability of funding. The grant award period is for 36 months, generally beginning on October 1st, 2021. Award amounts will vary. This program typically makes awards for $600 or $800,000. OVW estimates that it will make up to 54 awards for an estimated $34 million. Applications proposing to provide legal services primarily to victims of domestic violence or that do not meet the requirements of the sexual assault related project described below may request up to $600,000 for the entire 36 month period. Applications submitted by sexual assault victim service providers or sexual assault coalitions and that are proposing to focus 80% or more of the project's activities on legal services for victims of non-intimate partner sexual assault may request up to $800,000 for the entire 36-month period. Note if funded at the end of the 36-month award period, these grantees may be eligible to receive 24 months of additional non-competitive funding to continue their projects. OVW has the discretion to award grants for greater or lesser amounts than requested and to negotiate the scope of the work and budget with applicants prior to award of a grant. Awards will be made as grants. New applicants are organizations that have never received direct funding under the LAV program or whose previous LAV program funding expired on or before February 1st, 2020. Continuation applicants are those who have an existing award under the LAV program or an award that closed after February 1st, 2020. Recipients of an FY 2019 or FY2020 award are not eligible to apply as the lead applicant on an FY2021 proposal. Current grantees with a substantial amount of unobligated funds remaining as of March 31st, 2021, without adequate justification may be removed from consideration for funding or may receive a reduced award amount if selected for funding in 2021. The solicitation details other program eligibility requirements beginning on page 12. Please note that an applicant must include a nonprofit, non-governmental or tribal organization with demonstrated expertise on domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and or stalking, either as a lead applicant 
or a partner. The organization serving as the required expert on these crimes may be a larger multi-service organization that does not solely address domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and or stalking, but has a distinct or designated division or program that focuses on serving victims of these crimes. An example of this could be a YWCA that has a distinct domestic violence shelter. An applicant without the required partnership will be removed from consideration. The solicitation details the requirements for the delivery of legal assistance certification on pages 12 and 13. Application and submission information is included in the solicitation beginning on page 13. The complete application package is available on grants.gov or at the OVW website at www.justice.gov slash OVW. Applicants wishing to request a paper copy of the application materials should contact ovw.lad at usdoj.gov or 202-307-6026. Applicants should anticipate that failure to submit an application that contains all of the required specified elements will negatively affect the review of the application and may result in the application not being considered for funding. It is the responsibility of the applicant to ensure that a complete application is submitted by the deadline. OVW will not contact applicants for missing items. Applicants should refer to the chart on page 38 of the solicitation to ensure that all required steps and deadlines are met. Applicants should not submit documents that were not specifically asked for in the solicitation. Providing information that was not requested, such as letters of support from other organizations in your community or service area, will not increase the likelihood that an application will be selected for funding. So when in doubt, leave it out. Please carefully review the formatting and technical requirements on page 14. Points may be deducted for applications that do not adhere to the formatting and technical requirements. Please read the entire list of requirements. Applications must include all of the required documents. The proposal narrative. This section must include the purpose of the application, what will be done, and who will implement the project sections. Please refer to pages 16 through 18 of the solicitation for complete details. Budget detail worksheet and narrative. This section must include a budget and narrative that displays a clear link to the specific project activities and the proposed budget items. The budget should not contain items that are unsupported by the project narrative. A sample budget detail worksheet is available on the OVW website. A link is provided in the solicitation on page 19. You will fill out the budget and narrative in just grants via a web-based form. The data requested with application. The data request requested may be found on pages 26, on pages 24 through 26. Do not include any information in this section that is not requested. In questions eight through 10 regarding the statement as to whether the application is addressing a priority area, the statement should make it clear whether the application addresses the priority area. For example, Yes, this application addresses the sexual assault priority area focusing 50% or more of grant funded activities on intimate and non-intimate partner sexual assault, or no, this application does not address the sexual assault priority area focusing 50% or more of grant funded activities on intimate and non-intimate partner sexual assault. In question 14, the total of all percentages included 
should not exceed 100%. Do not include areas that are not listed in this question. The Memorandum of Understanding or Memorandum of Exemption. Please carefully review the distinction between the two and identify which is required for your organization. Please note there are additional questions in the project narrative and MOU, MOE section if an application is addressing sexual assault. Applications that do not include all of the three required, all of the required components will be considered substantially incomplete and will not be considered for funding. Although this section will not be scored, your application should include an abstract that does not exceed two pages double spaced. This section should not be a summary of past accomplishments. The abstract will be entered into a text box in Just Grants. The project narrative section should not exceed 20 pages double spaced and must include the required three sections, purpose of application, what will be done, and who will implement the project. Reviewers will not read more than 20 pages double spaced. If your application is not double spaced, reviewers will only read the equivalent of 20 pages double spaced. The remainder of the project narrative will not be scored. Make sure that you respond to every question within each of the sections. A budget and budget narrative are required. The narrative can be a separate document or included in the budget together. It must reflect 36 months of project activity it must include funds to attend OVW sponsored training and technical assistance in the amount of $12,000 for proposals from organizations located within the 48 contiguous states and $18,000 for organizations located within the territories, Hawaii, or Alaska. Please note this amount is for the entire 36 months and not per year. Applicants may budget expenses in excess of the required training and technical assistance amount if they are aware of relevant non-OVW supported conferences or training for which they would like permission to use grant funds to support staff and project partner attendance. The budget and budget narrative will be reviewed separately from the, pro from the proposed project narrative. The budget narrative must describe each line item requested in the budget and explain all costs included in the budget, including how the costs of goods and services are determined and how they will fulfill the objectives of the project. The next couple of slides, we are going to focus on aspects of your application that relate to the documents that our financial team, the Grants Financial Management Division, GFMD reviews. More specifically, we'll discuss some items that GFMD has identified from prior year applications that could help with expediting our review process. So for today, we're going to highlight certain aspects of the pre-award risk assessment and provide you a link to a detailed webinar on how to develop the budget that will be included in your application. The first thing we'll highlight are the items identified in the data requested with application, which is completed by all applicants. Specifically, two items we would like to discuss are the single audit response and the IRS three-step safe harbor procedure. OVW requests that all applicants provide a statement as to whether they have expended $750,000 or more in federal funds during their last fiscal year. If they have, then they indicate that and also specify the end date of their last fiscal year. 
However, GFMD is finding that applicants do not always include this information and leave out whether or not they have met the threshold or the end date of the last fiscal year is not included. Please ensure this question is answered in its entirety on the data requested with application. Question number three. So another item we'd like to highlight from the solicitation is specifically for nonprofit organizations. If you use the IRS three-step safe harbor procedure to determine your executive's compensation, you must refer the additional information section that provides the required disclosure letter. We'd like to highlight that there are four parts of this disclosure letter that must be provided to OVW in order to comply with this requirement. The sample letter that outlines all four parts of the disclosure, so please be sure to follow the sample and provide a response to each of the four pieces. The next item we'd like to discuss are the financial accounting practices, which assist GFMD during their pre-award risk assessment review for all applications. Each applicant must prepare a response to all 11 questions, and each question has multiple parts. We've noticed from prior years that applicants do not always fully answer all parts of the questions, which in turn requires GFMD to reach out to the applicant, which may delay recommendations. Some of the most common issues that we have encountered have been, for example, question number two, where the applicant indicates that they do indeed have internal policies, but they don't provide a brief list of topics covered in the policies and procedures. Another example of incomplete responses include question number three, where the applicant does not provide a brief summary of the organization's process for tracking expenditures and more specifically, whether or not it tracks budgeted versus actual expenditures. So these are just a few examples, but basically please make sure you read each piece of the question and provide a full and comprehensive response. This slide will quickly highlight some resources that are available that should be used as you're creating the budget to be submitted with the application. Over the last year, GFMD has worked to develop a detailed webinar presentation on how to assist applicants in developing a budget to be submitted with their OVW applications. They want to help reduce any challenges you may face with the budget and make it clear what they look for when they review your budget. This webinar provides some insight as to what OVW financial staff considers during their review. Use the following link, https colon slash slash www.justice.gov slash OVW slash resources hyphen applicants. The webinar can be found under the budget information section on this page. Next up is the uniform guidance, which can be found at 2 CFR 200. Then another resource is the DOJ financial guide, as well as the program specific solicitation. If you need assistance finding these resources, please contact the GFMD help desk. We know this can be a lot of information to process, so if you have any questions about the GFMD information discussed, please feel free to contact the GFMD Help Desk at 888-514-8556 or by email at ovw.gfmd at usdoj.gov. The MOU section can be found on pages 26 through 27 of the solicitation. For the purposes of this solicitation, the MOU is a document containing the terms of the partnership 
and the roles and responsibilities between two or more parties. The MOU must be a single document and must be signed and dated by the authorized representative of each proposed partner organization during the development of the application. An applicant must include a nonprofit, non-governmental, or tribal organization with demonstrated expertise on domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and or stalking, either as the lead applicant or a partner. Please note there are additional requirements for applications addressing the sexual assault priority area. The MOE section can be found on page 27 of the solicitation. This applies to applications from lead applicants that, as their mission or designated subdivision's mission, provide services to domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and or stalking victims. They may submit an MOE in lieu of an MOU if they demonstrate that they have the required expertise in providing services and or legal representation for victims of domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, and or stalking. If an MOE is submitted in lieu of an MOU and the applicant does not meet the criteria to submit an MOE, the application may be removed from consideration. Please note there are additional requirements for applications addressing the sexual assault priority area. The applicant should carefully review the requirements for both the MOU and MOE and decide how best to proceed. The applicant should not submit both documents in their application, only one will be scored. If you have a project partner who will receive a subaward as part of this project, you should submit an MOU. Pages 27 through 29 provide additional information about the additional documents that will not be scored during the review process, but they should be included with your application. Failure to include any of the information may result in your application being removed from consideration from funding. Please review this section carefully. When ready to apply, applicants may find this funding opportunity on grants.gov by using the CFDA number, grants.gov opportunity number, or the title of the solicitation, all of which can be found on the cover page. The FY 2021 application submission process is a new two-step process this year with significant differences from the application process in previous years. Application materials will be submitted in grants.gov and just grants. We recommend starting the application process, even just the grants.gov and just grants registration process as soon as possible to allow for learning the new system. Read the solicitation carefully to understand all steps required to submit an application and the time to complete those steps. Some steps, such as obtaining a data universal number system or DUNS number, or registering with the System for Award Management, SAM, or grants.gov may take several days to complete. We recommend applicants begin these processes as soon as possible, but no later than the dates suggested in the solicitation. Applicants must complete the Application for Federal Assistance, SF-424, and Grants.gov. The specific information required for this step is included in the information to complete the Application for Federal Assistance, SF-424, section of the solicitation. Applicants must also complete and submit the Disclosure of Lobbying Activities, SFLLL, in grants.gov. After submitting these forms, the applicant will receive an email notification from Just Grants to complete the rest of the application in Just Grants. 
If the applicant is a new user in Just Grants, the email will include instructions on registering with Just Grants. Just Grants, new for FY 2021. Applicants will submit the full application, including attachments, in Just Grants. If you have applied for OVW funding in prior years, you will notice some significant changes in the application process. In the new Just Grant system, applicants will enter some application information directly into text boxes in the system, fill out web-based forms, and upload some documents as attachments. We have included the following major elements of the application as examples of what applicants will submit in Just Grants. The proposal abstract will be entered in a text box. The data requested with application will consist of responses to posed questions and uploaded as an attachment. The proposal narrative will be uploaded as an attachment. The budget worksheet and budget narrative will be entered into a web-based form. The MOU or MOE will be uploaded as an attachment. In addition to these major elements, other documentation will be required for all applications or when applicable. Read the solicitation carefully or a full description of all items required within a specific application. In Just Grants, each applying entity will have an assigned entity administrator who is responsible for managing entity level information and assigning roles in the system. The entity administrator is also the eBiz POC designated in SAM.gov. For more information on registering with Just Grants, please refer to the to website just, justicegrants.usdoj.gov. Within 24 hours of Just Grants receiving your application from grants.gov, the user submitting the application in grants.gov and SAM eBiz POC will receive an email to register for a Just Grants account. The email is from DOG Secure User Management System, Diamond, and will include instructions on how to create an account. To ensure that you receive these emails and that they are not flagged as spam, we recommend adding DIAMD hyphen no reply at usdoj.gov to the trusted sender list in your email settings. The EBIS POC at the applicant organization serves as the entity administrator and must log in to Just Grants to confirm the entity's profile and add users. The user submitting the application in Justice Grants serves as the application submitter. Within minutes of completing your Just Grants account registration, the application submitter and the eBiz POC entity administrator users will receive an email from Just Grants with a link to the application started in grants.gov. Alternately, the application submitter can log into Just Grants and locate your pending application numeric digits excluding grant of the grants.gov tracking number in your task list on the home landing page. The entity administrator will need to log in to Just Grants to review the authorized representatives associated with the entity. If an authorized representative needs to be invited, the entity administrator will need to invite the individual to receive a Just Grants account. Note that an organization can have more than one authorized representative 
as long as those individuals have documented authority to sign an agreement with the federal government. These actions are required before an application can be submitted. Within minutes of being invited to be an authorized representative, the individual will receive an email from Diamond No Reply at usdoj.gov with instructions on how to create an account in DOG's, DOJ's secure user management system. Once the authorized representative receives the email and completes the steps to create an account, the authorized representative will be available in Just Grants. The application submitter will need to complete the application by entering data into web-based forms, uploading attachments, and accepting assurances and certifications. The application submitter will also need to select the authorized representative. Once all selections are complete, the application submitter will submit the application. Upon successful submission of an application, the application submitter, entity administrator, and authorized representative will receive an email from Just Grants confirming submission of the application. The Department of Justice has made a collection of self-guided training resources, including training in a virtual Q&A session on application submission, available at the website displayed on this slide. Recipients of OVW funds must comply with applicable federal civil rights laws, which among other things prohibit recipients from discriminating on the basis of national origin and disability. This includes taking reasonable steps to ensure meaningful access to grantees, programs, and activities for individuals with disabilities, deaf individuals, and persons with limited English proficiency. Applicants must include funds or other resources in their budget to support activities to ensure access for individuals with disabilities, deaf, hard of hearing individuals, and persons with limited English proficiency. Applications are due by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, February 3rd, 2021. Carefully review the How to Apply and Submission Dates and Time sections on pages 29 through 31 of the solicitation for applicant actions with required deadlines and OVW's policy on late submissions. Submitting the application components at least 48 hours before each deadline, grants.gov or just grants as applicable will enable applicants to receive notice of a failed submission and provide an opportunity to correct the error before the application deadline. Please note, applicants should only submit one application per program. If an applicant submits multiple versions of an application, OVW will review the most recent version submitted. OVW offers several options for an applicant to provide advance notice of a delayed application. Applicants should thoroughly familiarize themselves with OVW's policy on late submissions on pages 31 through 33. Only in rare circumstances are extensions granted. Failure to begin the registration or application submission process in sufficient time is not an acceptable reason for a late application submission. Lastly, we have some tips that may improve your chances on becoming an LAV grant recipient. Please note that fo the following list is not a guarantee that you will be funded, but it, it is included as a guide to navigate you through the OVW application process. Please read the solicitation in its entirety. It is important to make sure that you do not miss out on any important information by just skimming through the solicitation and just focusing on the how to apply section. 
read the solicitation and contact LAV staff or submit your inquiry in the LAV mailbox if you have any questions. Allow plenty of time to gather required information and submit well before the deadline. Although this is not required, more time will allow for any unforeseen obstacles such as power outages and natural disasters. Attend to the technical details. A missing or incorrect DUNS number or an expired SAM registration are some of the reasons an application may get rejected. It's important to keep your audience in mind and make it easy for them to read and review your application. Use the heading and subheading titles that are in the solicitation. This will help the reviewer more easily follow the application. Please keep in mind the reviewers will only review the information contained in the application. Be sure the application and responses to the program requirements and expectations are complete and clearly written. Do not assume that reviewers are familiar with your organization, service area, area, or barriers to legal needs in your community. Keep the reviewer in mind when writing the application. Organization, organization, organization. I cannot stress this enough. Many applications fail to receive a high score because the reviewers cannot follow the thought process of the applicant or because parts of the application do not fit together. Treat it like a puzzle. Let the pieces properly fall into place. Print out the final document and carefully proofread and review your application to ensure accuracy and completion. Also, number your pages in your application. This will also help the reviewer track and ensure you are following the solicitation formatting and instructions. Do not risk deduction in points for something as simple as formatting. Use acronyms judiciously, if at all. Remember that the reviewers are not familiar with your community and will not be familiar with the acronyms that your organization and project partners may use. Good luck. If you have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to contact our office 